back to the Egg Week podcast. I'm your host, Al Windmill. We're here with a special panel of guests. We're at the Crary Full Pod event here in West Fargo, North Dakota on a blustery December day. Uh, you guys all made it here, which is great to see. Uh, very happy to have you here on the podcast. It's been a while since I was in the, the driver's seat for this thing, so bear with me as we uh, shake the rest off and get rolling. But there's some great questions for you. We're going to learn a little bit more about each of you and uh, how things go on your farm, your YouTube channels, uh, your relationship with Crary, and uh, see what else we can talk about. How's that sound? Good. Let's do it. Do you guys all know each other um, outside of the relationship with Curry, or how does that? I've never met any of these guys before. <laughs> I feel like uh... here I'm over here nodding. <laughs> like we're all friends, but I mean the the farming community itself, agriculture is a pretty small world. And then uh, those of you that take the time to make videos and show off what you're doing on your operations is even smaller. So it makes perfect sense. Yeah, we've all met before. Well. Yeah. Chet and Doug farm I don't, an hour from me at the most. Oh, you guys so are that not, close. not too far away, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm what, like 15? 15, 15, <laughs> 15 hours or so, yeah. Just a small just a small journey away. Well, that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, well, no, I like the events to get with. Like like you said, we're all farmers, but there ain't many farming YouTubers, so it's fun to get together and, you know, talk about what we do and on, on online and the struggles and the, you know, it ain't. Everything changes all the time. I'm in digital marketing myself. I get it. Like, you get used to one thing and then the algorithm changes or what people want changes or somebody introduces a competitor. So I totally get it. That's and then there's only so many people you can actually talk to about it. Yeah. Right. Nobody gets yeah, what... Right. <clears throat> Farmers understand the farming side, but the YouTube thing's way different. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm, I, lo I love watching all your videos and uh, especially getting ready for this, catching up a little bit more and seeing what's going on, it's awesome. Um, I'm not a farmer, I, I wish I was. Uh, family, family, friends have operations that I get to spend time on luckily, but uh, it's a great way to connect for um, growers themselves and people who know farmers or just anybody who eats pretty much, you know, makes sense. Um, let's dive in here with some of the, the questions that we wanna talk about, agriculture specific. Um, I'm gonna start with, with Zach since he's right next to me. Um, technology on the farm. It, I mean, it, it seems like you can't go to a farm show, uh, fire up YouTube, whatever, open up Ag Week without seeing about some new technology in agriculture. Um, obviously, it's been a, a boon. There's, there's so many pluses. Um, when's too much technology, in your opinion, on your farm? But when, when is it too much? Well, I, I, like for us, what I've noticed <clears throat> is there's a lot of tech companies that really came into it in the last 10, 12 years. I think there's already too much out there. You, you really got to weed through and figure out what provides return on investment for you, for your farm. I mean, there's a lot of really good technology out there, but then it seems like there's a lot of companies that are pushing things that, I, I mean, it's cool technology, but I don't see a return on investment on it. So I think to some extent we're already there and we're just trying to figure out what's worth it and what's not. Kind of from the outside looking in, seems kind of like a cash grab. like. Right. This is a this is an idea that works somewhere else. Can we roll this out onto a combine sprayer tractor and see? I mean, um, I've been seeing like sprayer technology. They're, they're selling cameras more than they're selling sprayers at this point, it seems like. Right. Yeah. When, when I really noticed it was when, you know, we went through kind of that super cycle with good grain markets 07 through 2012 or so. And it seemed like a lot of the tech companies really shifted their focus onto agriculture. And I'm guessing that's because the rest of the economy was in a hole agriculture was doing well so seems to me like that's when a lot of these companies popped up and i think we're kind of thinning them out now and really figuring out which ones are going to stick around that sounds uh sounds like a solid take for sure um brian what do you is it any different in ohio i mean you guys are all kind of being pitched the same things by the different people who sell you stuff but what are you what are you seeing on the technology side so i farm with my father who's 72 and dad's really good with technology especially for his <clears throat> especially for his age. Sure. Um, but every day, or every year, at some point in planting season, I'll usually give him a camera and, hey, you know, you want to film some corn plant, and then I'll go check his footage. And I can tell when he's reached that point where he would really just like to go back to a old John Deere corn planter with some finger pickup and no technology. Right. Same time, we do see, like, return on some of those investments. I mean, it's not all bad, but there's it's just frustrating from time to time. I mean... I mean, you know, 
25 years ago, we had none of that on our corn planter. We still raised the crop. It wasn't as good of a crop, and we didn't have as much data, and we weren't making as good as management decisions, though. So, I mean. But you guys are just hopping in and going to work and not right. worrying about all the other stuff, which is. Yeah. Yep. You guys are running businesses, both on the farming and the YouTube side. Like there's, that's the real thing. Like there's nothing more frustrating than when something breaks and you have no way to fix it, <laughs> right. and you need it to be fixed. So oh. sensors, yes, software so, and sensors. Like I, you would think, like <clears throat> electric drives, that'll be simple. Like there's no chains. <laughs> People who don't farm, I, I equate it to new vehicles. Like the, all the little things that can go wrong, um, but it just scaled up for you guys. That's that's how I see it. It's Bigger problems that are way more crucial, like if you have a little window to plant or a window to harvest, whatever. Like one of my neighbors was was harvesting sunflowers uh, right before the storm this week. I have no idea why they waited so long, but you know that's that little window. You know if something goes wrong, well they're pretty much out of luck until snow melts. So I totally get it. I mean I don't want to sound like we don't like it or technology. But like I say, a lot of it is. I mean you're talking about those little windows. I mean we planted all of our corn in like five days this year. We couldn't have done that 25 years ago. Right. It's kind of a loaded question to ask you when it's too much, but yeah, no, I... But it does seem like there's also just a lot of repetitive software companies. I mean, yes, and they're yeah. trying to get us to try this product or... Like at one time, Dad had three different monitors in his planting tractor, and they were all doing the same thing. I'm like, why? why? Well, this one, I like, the, I like the way the map looks on this one. I was like, but we don't need it. We can get rid of it. And uh, just a lot of repetitiveness, it seems like. Are you in favor of more of a all-encompassing technology? Like, for instance, whoever makes the tractors you drive. If they had all the stuff in one, would you like that? Or do you like being able to pick and choose? This goes for anybody, but would you like to pick and choose off the shelf um, what works best for you? So for our operation, we have multiple brands of equipment. Okay. Um, if we were all one brand, I'd probably stay uh, that OEM route, but where we're not, um, we use a third party um, GPS company and everything can everything jives really well that way. So. Okay, that makes sense. Larson Farms, what do you think? Technology on your farm. Too much? Not enough? Where are we at? What day What day is it? <laughs> it always changes. It, it depends the day, I would say. I mean, uh, or the operator. I love the technology when it works. Um, the combines are, in my opinion, you know, they're self-setting and loaded with technology. Uh, makes it very easy, but you also now have to have an operator that understands computers almost more than the basic mechanics of the combine now. So if it's, you know, help from outside of your family, you, that is something that goes into the consideration for getting help, getting labor, right? Yeah, it, it, it definitely is uh, I mean, they might right to, to the computer savvy, but at least high speed planners really and clear, stuff. Right? I mean, that it's a lot. Dad's the yeah, one that I, runs that. I would say that, uh, when the technician has to come out with the laptop to fix the digger in the spring. That's too much. It's, it's, it's nice when it works, but boy, when it lets, lets you down, you're down. It, it's, yeah. uh, and the planter, that's a whole other animal of wiring harnesses that the mud <laughs> rips off. And When you just stand there and look, like, what, where do I even start? Right. <laughs> it's like, you can't see nothing broke. It's all internal or a wire or... And taking a torch to the wires never helps. <laughs> <laughs> All my farm friends are super handy, really good at fixing stuff that you, you guys have to be. But when it's stuff that you can't see, you've never experienced before, there's only so much you can do on the computer side. So I, I thought we were just going to come out here and have a nice conversation, but we're giving a master class for all these companies to like look at the look at the people using your stuff and solve some problems instead of creating new ones. Yeah, I'm talking about problems. I mean, that's drives a lot of our purchase decisions is what dealership has a, a good service department too. Cause I mean, I mean, we've had every brand of equipment you can have. And at some point we've needed service for something we couldn't fix. I've, I've heard that more often that service makes a dealership really. I mean, it makes the brand that you run for sure. Yeah, literally. I mean, we have deer and case within 30 miles if you want to go to a fent or cat or it's an hour 15 hour and 20 from us and who's going to do that to drive to get a bearing or a belt right. or a, right you know whatever simple component it's two hours of driving or more three hours of driving where i could go to deer half hour away grab my bearing be fixed up by the time i'm even to the parts store for you know different brand so they make the decision easy for you by being closer. It does. And, you know, it 
technology side, you know, too, it, it kind of goes with who has the most compa compatible. Right. You know, right. Um, pulling a deer planter with a red tractor really gets complicated. You should try pulling a red planter with another tractor. Yeah? Worse yeah. yet? Yeah, I, just, I was not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys, uh, any of you dabbled in <clears throat> autonomous farming or have a take on it that... My, my son has an RC car, does that count? Yes, put yeah. something up to it. Yep. Yeah, that works. Tell us all about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand how that's ever going to work <clears throat> in our area. I truly don't. Why? Is it the big fields? Is it mud? Fields, mud, pile yeah. inlets, ditches, crooked headlands, uh, rocks. Auto steer is great, but it, it can't you see that stuff. It can't make There's decisions too many right. variables that I would... Everything costs a half a million dollars or more. Right. And you're going to trust it to be out in the field by itself and not ram into something? Not drive away stuck. to the next county? <laughs> I would, yeah, I would have to say that the mud is going to be... I don't That's the biggest know. thing up for yeah. you guys? We got all we can do to hang in there and know where to go, and I just can't. But maybe there's... What do you guys think? You think there's a place in our area? I, I don't disagree with what you guys are saying, but I also have seen the autonomous tractors they have out there and the amount of cameras they have on them and how if it comes up to, you know, first off, you're mapping your headlands, you're probably mapping your tile inlets. If it comes up to what it thinks is a rock or a foreign object, it'll stop and send your phone a picture of what's there. So you can zoom in and see exactly what it is. You can tell the tractor what to do. Lift up over it, go around it, whatever. I mean... Sounds fun. I <laughs> so no, so no. Well, and it comes down to what what you want too. You know that that's the fun part of farming, and how much how much of that do we actually get to do anymore? You know, it's all business. You know, emails, phone calls, decisions. marketing plans. What am I going to do? Podcasts, right? Podcasts, <laughs> making videos, YouTube videos. You know, yeah. the really important stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, farming's driving equipment is what. 20% of the actual job. Oh, yeah. The rest yeah. is cleaning. Uh, fixing stuff. Fixing stuff that's broke. Prepping for the next you season. Know, I enjoy being in the... We all enjoy being behind the wheel. And to hire a machine to do your work and sit on your phone and, oh, okay, you can pass that Babysit it or, from your phone. Yeah. That mud hole. But what if you can hire that machine to do the tillage while you plant, and now you need one less guy running a tractor for you? I definitely feel the labor side, and that is going to be an issue in the future. I, I think eventually there's going to be a time. I, I don't, I'm don't. i kind of like you. I enjoy running equipment. I guess my, I mean, that's what drew me to farming was driving big equipment. I mean, it was it's always been fun, but I think eventually, like every other industry, it seems to be moving that way. I mean, you can buy a robot to mow your yard. I just think that I think farming is going to be very similar to that. Why don't you send me one of them lawnmower things then? I was going to yeah, say, I'd see? like a robot to blow the snow in my driveway right now. That'd be all right. <laughs> That'd be all right, yeah. What would help your farm in terms of technology? What What do you think needs to be the next big push beyond camera sensors, that kind of thing that has that we've seen the most growth in? I, so probably... Foot massaging floorboard. Yeah, I think that's next. I think that's uh, in the works. <laughs> Some innovation department. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they they've got the seats now, so they now do we have need the foot rubs. Seats? That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, you can't get by without those. Coffee pot. Like they have a fridge, a coffee pot. <laughs> little cure pod thing in there. I want, you know what I want? They put a fridge in there. That's great. You know, massaging seat, that's excellent. And why can't we have something to heat up our meals? You know, you got you got a hot plate or something, something. microwave, something microwave, yeah. Up. You know, there's antifreeze lines, two hundred <laughs> degrees. Like, run that into a, a box <laughs> like the fridge, <laughs> yeah. So that I can eat <clears throat> my uh, leftover <throat> pizza the next day or whatever. You know. Did you want like a real insightful answer here? <laughs> I, I, I like this way better. This is. Uh, uh, I like that. I've always, you know, compared tractors, combine sprayers to your office, like. When you think about some of these updates and upgrades to cabs, it might seem a little ridiculous, but if that's where you're spending a lot of your time a few times a year, why not be comfortable? Why not have what you need? Mm -hmm. I wish I had an answer for the microwave thing. I have seen, um, in a, I don't know if it's an attachment or something for snowmobiles, for guys that uh, can put like wrapped up hot dogs next to their, uh, I don't know if it's the muffler or the engine. Yeah, you put it on the one. exhaust, yeah. You put it right on the exhaust, yeah. there you go, yeah. Right under the... 
gas. Yeah, you get it. Right. <laughs> yeah. You put a it drip it on tastes there, a little bit like two-stroke <laughs> exhaust, but it's good. Okay. Um, service challenges. We've been talking a little bit about service and how it makes <clears throat> a dealership or, you know, whoever you're buying equipment from. Um, yeah. What else? is it? Can you see a better solution other than magically making them closer to your farm? Well, I was going to say, I don't know about a solution, but I think the most important thing is to have somebody that's good at what we've been talking about. You know, farmers can run torches and wrenches, but I don't want to, I don't know how to diagnose a sensor or a wiring issue or some software stuff. So the dealerships now, if that's what they're pushing in their equipment, which is, is good to increase efficiency, then they need somebody that's on it quickly so that we Would can diagnose like those things. A do it yourself option. I know they exist. You can plug your laptop in kind of like you can when you have a check engine light on your car. Do you guys prefer that, or do you just want snappier service from the dealership? I don't want to deal with it, personally. I don't understand the, the wiring. I You'd have to go to college. Just for that. Class, two years of classes to learn how to diagnose and understand the whole wiring. There's so many. When right. the harness is as big as your arm on right. the combine, it's like, where do you even start? Right. So one of the dealerships we deal with, um, their service manager is like second to none and to me like a good service manager at a dealership can really make that i mean you can have great mechanics but if the guy managing those mechanics isn't any good at his job it kind of defeats the purpose but i'm um, like a service manager that can walk you through some of those diagnostics over the phone like that's pretty crucial i think makes sense to me um what do you guys do for like firmware updates, like is that a huge pain point for you like it is in other industries? Uh, I can only imagine with, like you're talking about multiple monitors. Um, does that ever stop you from doing anything? Is there anything that you guys do to pay attention? Maybe it's... Never do updates when you are rolling. Right. That is the number one rule. <laughs> Makes perfect <laughs> sense. The planter, we run a um, high-speed planter, and number one rule is... Once it's going, you don't update, you don't shut down, Is this unplug. Is rule book, Doug? Yeah, and don't ask how we know that. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, it's so we first learned. hand experience. We learned, yeah, there's a, that, that goes back to the sticking with a brand. Um, our planter, I'm not going to say brands, is a deer planter, aftermarket products on there. Um, we updated, it quit talking to the tractor. Two hours later, sitting on the headlands when it should have been planting in beautiful, perfect conditions. During the update, it forgot what baud rate it was on, on the deer side. All you had to do is click one button. But to find two, one button. Two hours later of diagnosing, and then we said, yeah, we updated it. Oh. <laughs> Your baud rate turned off. It's like, oh my gosh, we should have started with we updated it. Yeah, that's frustrating. It worked the night before. It worked <laughs> that's the next one thing day. that drives me crazy. Like, I mean, when you parked that planter, it probably worked great. Mm -hmm. And like the year before, and then they like, say an update, and now all of a sudden we're fighting issues. Like, I don't, I don't like updates personally. If it's working fine, I just would prefer to get back in it when I need it and it, it not be screwed up. On my phone, I'm never the first one to update. Let those bugs work themselves out. I just imagine it's way bigger and a lot more money on the line for you guys for the update. So I can only imagine. Well, Let somebody else experience the the growing pains of the new update. And well, like Brian was saying, you plant so quickly and need to in in our area in Minnesota. I mean, you only got so many beautiful days before a rain event or you know a late fall you know planting date. You want to go, so when stuff works, you just don't ask how it's right. working. You just go. <laughs> We're not updating. Yeah, plus that planting date can be so critical for yield around us. Mm -hmm. Yield and moisture when it comes to the end of it. I mean, a week on planting date can make a huge difference. We are the really, <clears throat> and I did share that in one of our YouTube videos um, on soybeans. We've, we've actually started focusing on planting dates on soybeans is more or as critical as corn. Um, we planted 60 acres in this half section five days sooner than the rest of the field is five bushel better on those 60 acres same variety per day same, same beans variety. yeah uh the only thing that changed same 
fertility, same dirt, no variability there, just five days of planting and it was a bushel per day. It's insane. Those little little windows, that's yep. Mm-hmm. It's crucial. How about the moss? Are you are you have you I don't know how do I ask this, I guess. With the introduction, is the ROI there? Are you making more money, being more efficient, saving more money with the extra costs of all the technology that's being added? No. You don't think so? I, I mean, it's nice, but when they put... I don't know. I think a lot of things are hard to calculate. I, uh, like in our area, I think a high-speed planter, it's really expensive, but boy, if you can save a couple days on planting, like you talk, and you're talking a few bushels to the acre, yeah. I mean, maybe a couple bushels on beans, maybe 10 on corn, plus a moisture issue, I, I'm, something like that I think pays pretty well. But then there's other things where... You know, the mapping. I mean, it's fun to look at. It's nice. Some guys use it for other things. I don't use it very much because it's not dependable. I'll be planting a field and halfway through it quits mapping. Mm -hmm. And I give up on it. Oh, no. (laughs) So I'll just give up on it because I got to get the stuff in the ground. I know it's still planting, but the map doesn't ever show up. So one thing we noticed, I mean, we run two combines and we're both mapping and we're both sending our data to the same place and then we can look at it on the computer and... Like, for example, my moisture calibration was off by, like, three points all fall. I knew it. I was just dumb attack. I never changed it. Well, you can tell exactly where my combine ran by switching that, but you can also tell, like, if you adjust your legends a little bit, you can tell where every combine ran because they're not calibrated perfect. Right. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, there might be a <clears throat> bushel or two. Well, if you're using your yield maps for soil or for uh, soil tests, I mean, you said there's holes in it for sure. Right. And then, yeah, it doesn't always work all the time. Right. How do you guys stay up to date on all the changes? What's what's the source for you guys? Are you relying on your, you know, implement dealership salespeople, doing your own research, a little bit of both? How does that go? Twitter. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm 100% sure. <laughs> Twitter's not bad if you if you know what you're looking at and you kind of kind of weed through the what's useless I, egg twitter is mind-blowing to me yeah it's like its own community it's not it's like its own social network within a social network I right feel really dumb i'm not on it well if so you're not if you're not on it don't bother There's so many platforms that at what point do you just say that's it i can't handle any more platforms that's exactly it focus on what you're good at what you have time for what you care about don't do it just because and that's coming from a marketing guy but um so many brands people, whatever, yeah. jump in. But back to your question, I would say, especially pre-social media, I mean, now companies that I mean, uh, we've established relationships with, I mean, we usually reach out if they have a new product coming. But um, before that, I mean, farm show people are going to love hearing this, but I mean, uh, it's where we would see a lot of new innovative stuff was at a farm show. That's, that is good to hear. And yeah. Because, you know, I don't know. I go to a lot of them, of course, <clears> doing <throat> what I do for a living, and you hear different things. I think... The vendors, the the people setting up booths. Well, I think they all need to do a better job of stuff like that. That's the biggest thing. Don't complain that nobody came to your booth if you're not. I don't. Everybody's being sold to from the minute they wake up to the minute they go to bed, wherever they go, whether they're at home or driving by billboards, whatever. But um, give them a reason. Give them a a reason to come to your booth and see what's going on. That's that's interesting to hear. I know. Every time I go to a farm show, like all these things are shrinking. They're going to be gone soon. Well, I mean, I still value what I take from there. I mean, I, I still go there and try to learn things. So you okay. can actually maneuver through a farm show. <laughs> you just got to put your sunglasses on. Yeah. You guys need different outfits for when you go there? Disguises? Uh, yeah, I, I, I can s- disguise myself really well. Good. You too, probably, right? I find that uh, a hat that nobody's ever seen me in and different color sunglasses work really well. The problem with us is we travel in a pack and it's hard to break us up and it's just like impossible I mean I I love love what we do and our follower and support that's awesome but I can't farm show anymore I can't go you don't even go I can't I can't it don't work you just gotta push through you can do it (laughs) which is awful too because you want to have those conversations with the people who really I want to go there I want to do what you guys are doing but you know farm shows are great you do learn a lot for me I, I can't do it no more 
Yeah, go I'm, I'm kind of with you. It's just not enjoyable. Go on the last day in the last couple hours. We <laughs> actually will do after hours, walk around, yep. but then there's no one to talk to because everyone's like, 4.30, I'm, I'm going home or going to the hotel, I'm done. I'm sick of standing, and that's understandable too, but we'll try to go either before or after and just look at stuff. But I would suggest uh, following YouTubers for the latest technology. I do that for it's not per- bad. personal stuff. That's yeah. I mean, it <laughs> might sound like a joke, but that's I don't know. People who are passionate about it. We do get to play with some of the funnest up to date sneak peek type stuff yeah. with your partners. Yeah, but we've gotten to do a lot of cool stuff. And how do we learn? The company, the dealer, the reps, um, YouTube, the manual. <laughs> do you guys get a lot of support or at least access to somebody <coughs> above the dealer, like the manufacturer rep who calls on the dealership Depends or the technology expert? Okay. Not yeah. always. It's not like a... I mean, like if our local dealer brought a tractor that's a tractor that's been released for years, I mean, I'm probably not going to hear from that tractor company, but if it's a brand new model with all new technology and it's just being released and yeah I'm probably gonna they're probably gonna have someone that is very versed in that machine around I would say you sure should. makes perfect sense yeah from what I, in my experience it really depends on the company and what it is mm-hmm. I, I like being able to be I wouldn't I'd almost say even some of the companies we work with is we're almost like test engineers like weird. That know sounds what like works. a lot of responsibility. I don't want you to put that on me. <laughs> I like I love it. I like making stuff better. And hey, this don't work. Like why is this like this? Like Forever. we need to fix this. And so like we give a lot of this should I be changed. Feedback or yeah, whatever. feedback to the engineers, um, to the company, to the reps, and we've actually done a lot of <laughs> product improvement. And it's like. Hmm. So for whatever reason, we've ran multiple pre-production units that couldn't be on YouTube. And I'm like, you realize like what I do is like a side gig, right? Like, <laughs> hey, we're gonna bring you this combine, but it's not released yet, so you can't like show it. I'm like, what do you want then? Like, <laughs> right. <clears throat> that sounds like an additional pain in the neck. It is. So you get to deal with the problems, but you don't. You can't create any content out of it. Correct. You. Hmm. you you can make a lot of people angry. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, I can't show you about this, but it's pretty cool. Sorry. I do like the idea of uh, dealerships <clears throat> doing demos and coming out and doing some of the work for you or letting you use their stuff So they their put fuel. A lot. That's kind of a nice deal, it seems like. Eh, it's not in their fuel. Yeah. You're putting fuel Oh, okay, on. okay. But I, I don't know about that. It's not as good as it seems from the outside? <laughs> so on, online, it looks easy. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, there. Use some, put some hours in somebody else's machine. It's great. Oh, so I, if you already have a combine, though, what's 20 hours? It's 20 hours of trying to figure out a new piece of equipment that's leaving. It, and, and it's going to be 40 hours of dealing with somebody to get it all set up and get it right. Like Chad mm-hmm. said, it looks easy on the Internet, but it is. The, some of those demos are a real pain. Yeah. Phone call. If it ain't a season long and people, you know, other farmers, the comment section will be, oh, it must be easy to farm with free equipment. <laughs> you have no idea. If it ain't for the whole season, I'm not even touching it. Yeah, it's yeah. too much emails, phone <clears throat> calls, contracts, set up, well, understanding, that's... teaching yourself how to do it to not have it the whole season. Because, like you said, what's twenty hours? You don't yeah. even know how to operate the machine in twenty hours. That said, like, like for me, like if it was something that we were generally interested in and probably going to purchase, and the dealer is letting us try it for twenty hours, but if they're bringing us a piece of equipment for publicity to try to sell you something or Try to help, try to get help more, sell them. Yeah, like like you said, I, I don't think mm-hmm. that like 20 yeah, hours is not really worth it. You get all the technology that comes with the PC equipment that takes, I don't know how many hours of wiring harnesses and monitors. Well, and it depends. Yeah, it depends what type of tool you're using. A lot of it is string harnesses into your cab, put a bracket in your cab, get it located. Plug in power, get 12 volt power to it. Take More work than it's worth. It, one thing that drives for me for 20 crazy. hours, yeah. I think it drives me crazy. Like going back to data management. I mean, we try to map all of our fields. Well, we had this combine for a day and a half, and 
now all of a sudden all that yield data is going because it's in this format. I need it in this format. Well, now that combine's in Wisconsin, and I'm still in Ohio, so I don't know. It's kind of. What if they bring you one to try that has a microwave in it? You I want know. the coffee pot. He wants the coffee pot. <laughs> I, all we need is some radiator hoses into the box that's like the fridge. And what what you need to do is figure it out and patent it. Right. Stop telling other people your idea. You got to own the patent on that. Cut it all out. Got to cut it all cut out. Cut it. Cut it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap up this uh, technology-focused uh, episode of the podcast. We'll be back with some more from the Crary Full Pod event here in West Fargo, North Dakota. Thanks, guys. Appreciate having you here. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. you.